Hey everybody, all of us at Tired Old Queen at the Movies want to wish you and yours a very safe and happy holidays. I know that a lot of us can't be with our families this year, but we can always be with Steve. Don't forget to click below if you want to subscribe or hit the bell to make sure you always get when we've posted a video. There's also merch for sale below. Let's go see Steve. Merry Christmas, Johnny! This year I decided to go with Loretta Young and Celeste Holm in Come to the Stable from 1949, directed by Henry Coster. In 1947, Loretta had her best year in films. She made a comedy called The Farmer's Daughter and unexpectedly, in one of their biggest upsets, won Best Actress of the Year. The same year, a picture she was in called The Bishop's Wife, which we love, was also for Best Picture. So her stock went up all of a sudden and she could choose what she wanted to do. She had been a 20th Century Fox and left under very kind of not good circumstances. She didn't like Daryl Zanuck and he didn't respect her as an actress according to her. <laughs> she once said, in 18 years I was there and he never sent me flowers. So. <laughs> <laughs> After her Oscar wins, she had a good string of films. She did The Stranger, which we saw with Orson Welles. She did a movie called Rachel and the Stranger with Robert Mitchum and William Holden. Hot, hot, hot. And she did a film noir called The Accused. So Zanuck came to her and said, I want you to do a comedy here at 20th called Mother is a Freshman. She said, okay, I can do that. She said, but if I do that, I want you to do a movie that I want to do called Come to the Stable. Well, he didn't think too much about it. She got Henry Coster, who directed her in The Bishop's Wife, to come over and do this. Now, the plot of this movie is very simple. It's about two nuns who come from a convent in Europe, and their children's hospital was in Normandy during the invasion. And it was, uh, the Nazis had been using it to, as an observatory, and it was set to be bombed. She went to the army and pleaded with them. That if you would help me get through to the American general and the hospital would be spared, that I would one day come back home to my own country and build just such a hospital for her sick children. So the, the movie starts with these two nuns and they've come to Bethlehem, Connecticut, because in Bethlehem, Connecticut is this painter of religious pictures named Miss Potts, played by the indomitable Elsa Lanchester. You are Miss Amelia Potts, who paints the beautiful religious pictures? Why, thank you. Yes, I am. And she, when they come to visit her, she has local people posing for, for a scene she's painting of the nativity. She's got this little boy hanging like as an angel from one of the rafters. Oh, to get down. Oh, take him down, take him down. Don't, no, don't be, take him down. And they take the animals out and she opens up her house to them. And she says, what can I do for you? What are you here? And they tell her this story that they want to do this. One of them is French. Celeste Holmes is Sister Scholastica. She's French. Oh, oh no, but you can't be. Oh, no. No, I was born in Chicago. And Loretta Young is Sister Margaret, and she's American. She says, oh, and you've asked to go to ask the bishop for money. And she says, well, that's our only problem. We have no money. So they make friends with the next-door neighbor, who is played by Hugh Marlowe, who's a songwriter for Broadway songs. And the guy that works for him is Anthony, played by Dooley Wilson, who is famous for Sam, the pianist in Casablanca. And he allows them to use his Jeep. <laughs> And they say, oh, we were taught how to drive the Jeep. I know how to drive the Jeep from the army. Oh, during the war, the GIs taught Sister Margaret all about the Jeep. She gets behind the wheel and she drives like a maniac. Oh, no! go into New York and they pull a U-turn in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral and they go inside to pray. <laughs> and when they come out, this police officer has just written them a ticket and she says, so we're looking for uh, uh, Luigi Rossi, who's the biggest gangster in New York because he owns the property that they've decided they want to build their house on, which is across from Miss Potts' house, please. So he says... Offices? Yes. Well, sister, his hangout, uh, you can find him, that is, on 52nd Street. They go, oh, thank you. And they see the ticket, and they go, all these Americans, they leave their ads everywhere. <laughs> they rip up the ticket, and they go to visit Luigi Rossi. It's Americans and their publicity. Well, Thomas Gomez, great character actor, plays Luigi Rossi, and they come to him, and it's all these characters around him are typical gangland characters in the 40s, you know. The, the sisters walk in and sit down and automatically they go. So one of them goes over and drops a dollar in her hand and they go, oh, thank you. 
Who comes see Mr. Rossi? And he says, well, Mr. Rossi ain't gonna see nobody, sister. He don't see nobody. You know, she, oh, well, he'll see us. Uh, would you tell him that, um, that we're here? And they, so they go in and they go, now, we've seen your land and we've decided to build our hospital. And we were wondering if you would- No, I'm sorry, sisters, I can't do it. Well, we understand, Mr. Rossi. It's only natural that you should want security. I plan to build my retirement there, you know? It was the house I was always going to build when I get out of this racket uh, business. And uh, I want to move there into Connecticut and have a nice house on the hill with all my stuff. I'm sorry, sister. I mean, I understand your plight, but really, I can't do it. And he goes to leave, and she pick, Loretta picks up this portrait of this young man and says, Oh, is this your son? He says, Yeah. She says, Oh, was he in, in the war? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Rossi, he came back, didn't he? No, sister. He died in Normandy. Oh, well, that's where our hospital was. Oh. You know what, sister? This hospital, is it going to have windows in it? Well, we hadn't thought about that. Uh, put one in, a big one, with Luigi Rossi Jr. on it, and the land is yours. So he, he this is, and this kind of stuff starts happening throughout the story. So suddenly he gives her the land. Then she goes to the bishop, and the bishop only gives her a hundred dollars. And he says, "Look, you've got to raise a lot of money before this comes up because she's already got a mortgage now that she didn't realize that she had. She's got to pay off a lot of money." And he says, uh, "You're not going to get this kind of miracle. So I'm going to give you a month." to get this together, or we're going to send you home. And soon we're going to have more and more, because we're planning to buy a bell. A bell? Yes. What can you do with a bell? We shall begin by ringing it, Your Excellency, yes. Well, meanwhile, Loretta went ahead and contacted everybody at the convent over there, and they all arrived that day. A bus pulls up, and 11 nuns and a priest get out, none of whom can speak English. They all speak French, and they get out, and they start setting up things. and. Miss Potts goes, well, what, what are they going to I don't have room. Oh, don't worry, Miss Potts. They're just good. We're going to sell things. We're going to raise money. This one raises eggs, and this one knits beautiful blankets. And, oh, no. Oh, yes. And this one over here. Well, meanwhile, the guy who writes the songs next door doesn't want a nun and a hospital next to his dream house that he has bought with all the money he made on Broadway. So he's having a conniption fit. Hold it. Plus his guy Anthony is helping the nuns out all the time. So he has his friends up and he sits down and he composes this brand new song that he's written for this new Broadway show that he sure is going to be a hit. So long and sleepless night. All of a sudden it's silent and you hear the nuns singing it next door. And unbeknownst to him, he's stolen this thing from their things and he's written a Broadway song around it. So now he's furious. I whisper your name. Are you accusing me of lifting that tune? And then Loretta goes out and she wants to plant a, a sign that, to, that this is her property and she plants the sign and she goes through one of his water main and they have this huge gusher of water and she thinks it's a miracle. He has no water in his house now. He's just furious. Everything starts to build and you think it's not going to happen. And the nuns come over to apologize to him. The songwriter's not there, but his friends are there. And they're playing tennis. And they said, well, we, we have to go tomorrow. And they go, really? Why? He goes, well, we're, we're almost paid off enough for our mortgage, but we don't have $500. But you know, I'd really give a small fortune just to beat them once. Would you give $500 if I, if I play tennis with you? And he says, okay, great. So Celeste Holm goes to Loretta and she goes, and Celeste Holm goes out and whacks at tennis. They play tennis and she is on top of it. She whacks it and whacks it and whacks it. And she doesn't make it. Just by a hair. 
And she comes back, and so they don't have the $500. And she comes back, and she says to, to Loretta, I'm so sorry. And Loretta says, that's all right, sister, you tried. And she, the guy says, wow, I haven't played a game of tennis like that in years. Where did you learn to play tennis like that? She says, well. You remember, perhaps, Jocelyn Allard of the 1939 French team? Yes. You are Jocelyn Allard? You are her. I was. It's just got so many touching moments like this. Whether or not they raise the money, it's Christmas. I leave it to you. But the main thing about this movie is that it has such great heart. And it's got a certain... I love Loretta Young at Christmas time. I loved her in The Bishop's Wife. I, there's, a, there's something about it. She was very Catholic, Loretta. Um, a lot of people thought maybe it was because she'd had this illegitimate child with Clark Gable in the 30s uh, and raised her as an adopted daughter, and she had a lot of guilt about that. She was determined that this was going to be an authentic Catholic movie. And she was kind of a pain in the neck about it to the director and to the producers and everything. This isn't, this isn't right. And this isn't authentic. And she had a swear box on the set. And every time you lose, used the Lord's name in vain, you had to put a quarter into the box. Well, this story has been attributed to Robert Mitchum, Ethel Merman, and uh, Joe Mankiewicz, that somebody put $100 in the box and said, well, there's $100. Now, fuck off, Loretta. But <laughs> This was a story by Claire Booth Luce, who wrote The Women, and it was based on a true story of two nuns who, out of nowhere, appeared after the war and in New England set up a convent. I, I, I'm never afraid of having a spiritual movie, and I, especially around this time of year, and this one just sort of hits the, the right note at the right time. I think you're going to love Loretta Young, Celeste Holm, Elsa Lanchester, all of whom were nominated for Academy Awards for this movie. This movie received seven Oscar nominations. Mother Was a Freshman had come and gone. And to Daryl Lefzanek's amazement, this movie got seven Oscar nominations. And it's, it's great. Merry Christmas, and welcome to Come to the Stable from all of us at Steve Hayes, Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Let's all go to the lobby. Happy Christmas, Mary. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Mary. <clears throat> the popcorn can't be beat.